So Sami Zatari posts a video that is actually quite good. And I would encourage you to go and watch that video. If you haven't watched it already, perhaps go and look at the video description uh, or the annotations that I'm going to put up here. Find Sami's video, watch it, and then maybe come back here. Because I think it's worthwhile you watching his video and to see where he's coming from. By and large, I think what he's saying is quite reasonable and quite valid, even though perhaps he has certain opinions that I don't agree with, and certain interpretations of history, for example, that I don't necessarily agree with. On the other hand, there are, you know, what he's saying is at least partially valid enough with regards to, for example, our history of meddling into you know, areas on the globe that in which the majority of people who live there are Muslim. And the, the fact that we have been interfering in the affairs of those people for a long time is undeniably true. And that that leads to an awful lot of resentment is perfectly understandable. And, but what is the most important message, I think, from Sammy's video, the thing that is the most salient to what I want to discuss here is his request to when you're looking at something like for example you look at Muslims and how angry they get at cartoons when you look at that to try and put yourself in their shoes to see what way they look at the world what way they look at their place in the world, how their history has played out from their perspective, and what it means then within that context, within that background, in their background, putting yourself in their place, seeing where they're, they are at, and then to look at what it's like for them to then be confronted with something like an insulting cartoon and how that makes them feel that is a perfectly valid thing to ask people to do now of course as i pointed out in a comment on his video understanding the reasons why certain things happens don't of course necessarily make such things right so when i look at muslims and they are rioting in the streets over some cartoons or whatever, and they are actually causing criminal damage and issuing death threats to people, then that is wrong, regardless of why it might be happening and how understandable it might even be if you're trying to put yourself in their position. It is still wrong to cause criminal damage. It is still wrong to issue death threats and of course that is equally true when anybody else is pushed to that sort of behavior when people riot in the streets of Paris for example and cause criminal damage when people riot in the streets of Dublin for whatever reason and they cause criminal damage people in Greece have very very legitimate grievances because they are now being victimized for the complete and utter lack of competence that their governments have been displaying over the last decades. Now, of course, you could argue that Greece is a democracy, or at least it has been for a while. They had a military dictatorship for a while as well, but they have been a democracy for a while, and you could argue that in a democracy you get the government that you deserve but still, you know, you still vote a government in place with a certain expectation of a certain level of competence. And if you are let down in that regard, then it is not necessarily always the case that the people who vote for a government are to blame. So, again, the Greek population's resentment and anger is understandable, very understandable, but again, if they go rioting in the street and they cause criminal damage, it's no excuse that their anger is understandable. 
So that is the first point I wanted to make. The other point I wanted to bring up, and the other thing that I would like to ask, is, again, Sami Zatari asks us to try and put ourselves in his position, or, or the position in the position of the people he's speaking for in this video. And look at it, you know, try and imagine what it's like for them to be confronted with this, and then understand why they're feeling the way they do. But of course, that is a two-way thing. So I would equally then ask of Sammy to try and do the same thing. Try and put himself in our position. And when I'm saying our position, I would like him to try and put himself in the position of, say for example, a not so bright Danish cartoonist. And now think of what it is like for that person. Now his country is a small country, an insignificant country in the great scheme of things. His country has never been involved with a sort of colonialism in the Muslim world that Sami, for example, is talking about. Also, even though, of course, we can observe that countries in Western Europe are often in a placed by necessity, by their own economic dependence on countries like the USA, they are put in a subservient position to the USA. So when you're looking at somebody like a Danish cartoonist, you know, I noticed in Sammy's video, there was an awful lot of rhetoric that went along the lines of, you came into our countries and you bombed our, you know, our civilians and you raped our women and you, 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 you. And try and put yourself in the position of this Danish cartoonist. Now, I am not particularly proud or I wouldn't be particularly, you know, impressed with what that man did. But on the other hand, you know, let's try and put ourselves in his position. Now, there is a country in the world that his own country is somewhat subservient to, to some extent, that rules the roost and that has been heavily involved in Muslim countries causing all sorts of mischief, but that he was never himself personally responsible for. He might even have never voted for the Danish governments that make themselves subservient to the USA and that allow themselves to be used as puppets by the US government, if you want to take that particular view of reality. So, he is in a position where he is somehow, as somehow someone who is just a cartoonist, who may not even agree with his own government's policies, who may have never voted for them, he is being equivocated, he is being used as a proxy for those elements in Western society who are responsible for such things. You see, this is the problem that happens with every confrontational situation, every situation where there's a conflict between two groups of people, where there's a lot of mutual distrust, disrespect and even hatred perhaps, where people in the one group see everybody in the other group as a proxy for the whole group and hold them responsible for the behavior of the whole group or for those in power in the other group and what they have been doing. And that is of course equally unfair. It is equally unfair to look at what one silly cartoonist in Denmark does and pile on top of that all the misdeeds that were done in the name of any Western government over the last 100 years. You see how that doesn't really work, how that isn't really fair. So there has to be a balance there. There has to be a balance between where people indeed ask us all to put ourselves 
in the other person's shoes. Try and look at things from the other person's or the other group's or whatever perspective. Try and understand why they react in certain ways, why they feel in certain ways about what you might be doing. But on the other hand, our freedom of expression is a very important and I would almost say a, you know, something that we almost hold sacred insofar as you can use that word in a secular context. You see, the right to freedom of expression is a very important right. And that also means that sometimes you will get insulted by what somebody else does, by the way that they choose to express themselves. You see, again, I would ask you to put yourself in our shoes. Put yourself in the shoes of a not very clever Danish cartoonist. But try and look at it from his perspective and try and see how he might have had a long career of great creating cartoons in a Danish newspaper. And he would be lampooning all sorts of power figures, figureheads, whatever else that he might not have disagreed with. When a minister in his own government did something silly, he would draw a caricature of that minister and it would appear next to an article in his newspaper. When George Bush screwed up for the umpteenth time in the United States, I bet you he drew a cartoon lampooning George Bush, drawing him as a caricature. So he was doing his job. He was just doing what he always did. Except this time, the figurehead that he chose happened to be Mohammed. And in fairness, from his perspective, from the perspective of that Danish cartoonist, the response was incomprehensible, was disproportionate and baffling to the extreme. And that is where we need to understand the position from every angle. So freedom of expression, of course, is a very important thing. I'll repeat that. And it is something that we need to hold sacred, that we cannot interfere with in any way, shape or form. And that does mean that we need to accept that sometimes people are going to express themselves in a way that we find deeply offensive. But one point that I think, Sammy, you might have actually said this as well, is that there's an awful lot of attitude there where especially with regards to the cartoons, the Mohammed cartoons, for example, where as soon as anybody expresses any sort of disgust with it, any sort of unhappiness with a cartoon like that, an awful lot of people start screaming that this is an issue of freedom of expression and that these people have every right in the world to do whatever they did. And they do. Of course they do. But on the other hand, it seems almost, and maybe even in practice, it seems to be the case that they seem to think that their freedom of expression means that they can go and make insulting images of the Prophet Muhammad, for example, but that nobody can then, in response to that, express their disgust with it. And of course, you do need to understand that if you are proposing that we should be able to present such images as expression of our freedom, that people who are at the receiving end of such images should have the exact same right to express their unhappiness with them. They can use their freedom to exp of expression to tell us all how disgusted they are with them. That is also freedom of expression. So anybody who responds to Muslim anger by saying Muslims should STFU has sort of missed the point, haven't they? 
and not even sort of.